It's not every day that a three-time Super Bowl champion, former NFL MVP, Hall of Fame quarterback agrees with the exact same thing that you've been saying. Happy Friday. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What is going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, Steve Young, ooh, he got Raven Nation shook up right now because he has some very interesting things to say about Lamar Jackson and the Ravens actually, him feeling like they're holding Lamar Jackson back. And we're gonna get into that in a bit, but first and foremost, I gotta give a special shout out uh, to Jared. Jared is the newest team, keep it clean patron and shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons i, I love y'all thank y'all for supporting the channel extra if anybody wants to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids and if you don't want to please don't worry about it but something that i'm worried about something that steve young is worried about is the fact that the ravens he just doesn't feel like the ravens have maximized lamar jackson's potential and and, and does that sound familiar at all well, yeah, because we've been saying the same thing. And we just really want to see them do more for this guy that they have at quarterback that's not just some guy that they have at quarterback. Lamar Jackson is different in a great way. Lamar Jackson is special in a great way. He is unlike any quarterback currently in the NFL, and he is unlike any quarterback that has ever been in the NFL. But you know what? Before we get into it, let's hear exactly what Steve Young had to say. Robert, you set me up perfectly because the Baltimore Ravens have doubled down again on being the most un being the most sophisticated running game in football, and they have been mowing through regular season opponents for a long time with this most sophisticated running game. My position is they will never get to championship football without a sophisticated passing game. That's not anything to do with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is a complete player that is being not trained in being a sophisticated passer. They double down again back to all the great things that Lamar does, great. But until he gets the chance to show that he is a sophisticated passer of the football in a sophisticated passing game that is properly, you know, invested in, which we never have, which they never have done to Robert's point just a minute ago, they don't invest in it, they don't teach it. And now you ask them, why isn't he getting paid to be Patrick Mahomes? Because they haven't given him a chance to be Patrick Mahomes. So until they do, Lamar Jackson's damned because of what the Ravens are doing, not because of Lamar Jackson. I can't wait for someone to train Lamar Jackson in a sophisticated passing game. I think he'd be the greatest player in the history of the game. Yeah. But he keeps getting, he's being held back by the Ravens year after year because they keep doubling down to this thing that Lamar Jackson is great at. No question, he's, he's the best at that. But it's not the championship football that they need to play, and it's not where Lamar Jackson wants to be. I want the full measure, Robert, of yeah. who Lamar Jackson is. And the full measure is not being brought forward by the Ravens. And if that's not the case, then get out and find someone who will. Whew, I really wonder if Steve Young is part of Team Keep It Clean. But anyway, Steve Young made a, a lot of really, really good points. And probably my, my, my favorite point and the most important point to me was the fact that I, I just do not feel like the Ravens have maximized Lamar Jackson's potential. I feel like they haven't capitalized on so many opportunities that they've had annually uh, to really, like, really, really go hard and invest in this pack, like, to, to, to where there is no excuse, to where we really know the full potential of one Lamar Jackson. Now, um, there's been a couple of different ways that I've came to that conclusion. Obviously, with the, the lack of investing in a, a, a true, quality, proven receiver. And again, I know y'all. some of y'all are tired of hearing this, but I got to continue to reiterate it because it is factual. You look around the league at all these other young quarterbacks. These, uh, these other teams, they provided for all these other young quarterbacks. And they were like, hey, we're going to make sure you have no excuse at all. That, that we fully know what you're fully capable of. They've, they've done it. They've continued to do it. But the Ravens have been like, ah, 
We'll draft some guys in the first round. So they drafted Hollywood. They drafted Rashad Bateman. And then we'll also draft the most receivers over the past couple of years. from Devin DuVernay, Miles Boykin, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. But as far as giving you proven guys, ah, your pocket's kind of tight with that. So we'll give you some leftover. Now we got you, Lamar. And they've been coming up short in that area big time. But this is not anything that's new. So we cannot act like this is something that's new when it comes to the Ravens. Because the same thing happened with Joe Flacco. We didn't get to see the maximum potential of Joe Flacco consistently. Guess what happened when the Ravens actually provided him with legitimate receivers and three of them? <laughs> well, at the end of the year, Joe Flacco was raising his arms up in the air. All the Ravens had the confetti coming down in New Orleans. And it was like, oh, they won the Super Bowl. They won the Super Bowl. Because they went and had, had got Anquan Bolden. They had Torrey Smith, who they had drafted the previous year. They signed Jacoby Jones. So it was like, all right, let's go. And they still were running the ball like they love to do. And, and we know the Ravens' philosophy is run the ball play good defense, and they were able to do those things, and even that, that Super Bowl, yeah, even though the, de the defense was like 16 to 17, but they were opportunistic, and they made plays throughout the year. They didn't have to be this shutdown defense. They didn't have to be this lockdown defense, but they made plays, and then on the offensive side of the ball, yeah, they, they ran the ball well, but then the receivers, they made plays, and those receivers, you, you saw how important those receivers certainly were come playoff time because throughout every single playoff game what did those receivers do they made plays in the Colts game the Colts game Anquan Bolden literally took over took over he was doing his thing of course Ray Rice did his thing and Dennis Pitta continued to do his thing you know the Ravens and tight ends they always gonna go off but Anquan Bolden took over then who they play next oh the Denver Broncos Torrey Smith <laughs> Big playmaking receiver. Hey, guess what happened? He did his thing. Two touchdowns in that game. And then Jacoby Jones. Hey, no, no Jacoby Jones. Playoffs end right there in Denver. That's it. It's over with. And then the following week against the Patriots, Anquan Bolden, he was doing his thing. Of course, Dennis Pitta, too. And then the Ravens, the defense, they were being opportunistic. And then in the Super Bowl, I mean, we already know about Jacoby Jones. Torrey Smith contributed. Anquan Bolden. And it was, but you see, there was the consistent contribution from the receivers. And that was back in 2012. So with, with the Ravens, it, it's just it's very important. It, it, it should be more important to make sure you can, this is not saying that, hey, stop. Don't run the ball. Anymore. No, no, no. Nobody's saying to stop running the ball. They can still run the ball. And we know the Ravens are going to continue to run the ball very well. So it's not saying to stop that. But it's just saying that more emphasis and quality emphasis needs to continue to be put in the passing game. Continue, it needs to be put in investing quality in the wide receiver position. Uh, we'll see how the guys do this year. But that, that is a lot. And I'm not saying that they can't live up to it. It's just, again, unknowns. But that is a lot of pressure on asking Rashad Bateman, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace, Devin DuVernay. Uh, and then we'll see who, who ends up making the roster after that. Could it be Shamar Bridges? Could it be Makai Polk? Could it be Sl uh, Slade Bolden? Could it be anybody else? Could it be Bailey Gaither? We don't know yet. We'll see. Only time will tell. But that is a lot of pressure on asking those guys to be the guys to take you all the way. Now, of course, hey, we hope that they, they end up coming. We hope they end up doing their thing. We really do. Um, but it's, it's to be determined. But there, again, it's a lot of unknowns. It's a lot of unknowns. Um, but back to what Steve Young was saying about Lamar Jackson. With Ravens philosophy, um, the quarterbacks have not been maximized like that, especially consistently. And with Lamar Jackson, I feel like he really has never been maximized like that. And that's something that's scary to think about because he's going into year five. Year five. Year five. It's his fifth year in the league. 
Lamar Jackson is still on his rookie deal. And we've heard, of course, the Ravens, hey, they tried to get that guy. They tried to get this guy. They tried to get that guy. They tried to get that guy. They tried to sign him. They tried to sign him. Oh, he turned down the Ravens. He was like, no, uh-uh, they couldn't trade for him. They didn't want to give up as many draft picks. And da-da-da. We've heard all the trying. But there's been a lack of success. And where there has been success is just been with castoffs at the receiver position. It's been with castoffs. And nobody's here to, to bash the Ravens, but we're just saying, like, man, we just wish that they would have done more for somebody who is so special. Somebody who's so special. It's like if, if you're dating somebody. And you know, like this person that you dating, they you've never dated anybody like this before, and 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 it's a it's a good thing because this person will show you a lot of a, a lot of great traits and whatnot. They different. They like nobody you ever dated before, and you know they're special. But if you don't treat them as such, you could potentially lose them, and you don't want to lose them. Steve Young had a little bit more to say. Let's get into that next clip. He wants to be the highest paid player in the league. Yes. And the Ravens, for the Ravens, he, they should pay him because he's doing what they want him to do. My case is that he can do more somewhere else based on what they're investing in in an offense and the, and the philosophy. But in the way that the Ravens need Lamar Jackson, they should pay him. Oh, yeah. All right. After that part, once I heard that, I was convinced that Steve Young is part of Team Keep It Clean. So, Steve Young, I appreciate you. And I, I thank you for watching the videos, my friend. Appreciate that. Now, some words that he used, the, the word that he used that we've been saying for so long, philosophy. Oh my God, philosophy. Steve, philosophy. Now, again, I, I, I do not want Lamar Jackson to go anywhere. I, I, I really hope he, he does not go to another team. That's why we just, we, we just want better. We just want better. That's it. Ravens are not some bad team. No, and nobody's saying that. Nobody is talking about them like, and it's no offense to these teams, but nobody is talking about them like they the Jaguars or the Jets or, uh, or any just team that's just been historically bad over the years. Nobody is saying that. But when you have a team that has had a, a lot of success, uh, over the, in, in their short tenor as a franchise, then your expectations should be high. You should not have lowered expectations and be like, oh, well, hey, well, the Ravens got two Super Bowls in 20 some years. Is that good enough? Well, when you look at the teams that they had and you look at, the, again, the quarterback who they have right now, you just feel like there should be more. And you really want to see this team really go all in to try to get more. But then that leads to another question. Are they really trying to get Super Bowl or are they just trying to stay competitive? You, and, and as fans, hey, it's like, hey, we want our team to win a Super Bowl every single year. We want that. Does the franchise want that? And we know, again, NFL is a business, so the biggest thing is making money. The biggest thing is making money. We know the Ravens, they made a lot of money. Lamar, done, he done got them a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. But... If they're really trying to win championships, they're really trying to win Super Bowls, then more should be done. More should be done. And now a lot of this will be, hey, we'll see what happens when we get there. Regular season is right around the corner. And we'll see, hey, how is Lamar Jackson this year? What, what has he worked on? Is it translating to the game? We'll also see, hey, how are those wide receivers this year? What, what have they worked on? Is it translating to the game? We'll also see, hey, how is Greg Roman this year? What has he worked on? Is that new 20% going to be in there? Has it translated to the game? How is John Harbaugh going to be this year? What has he worked on? How is the coaching going to be? And will it translate to success? And it's, it's just, again, it, it starts from the top. Everybody has to be on the same page with this thing and Ravens the page that they've been on and again I know a lot of the whole saying is oh a lot of teams like to, to zig the Ravens like to zag they like to do things their own way <sighs> let me see 2020 the Ravens beat the Titans and 2014 the Ravens beat the Steelers I believe 
And those are the only two playoff wins that the Ravens have had ever since the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl happened in February of what, 2013? Um, 20, the, the following season, the 2013 season, they didn't make the playoffs. 2014, they made the playoffs and they, they won that one playoff game. Um, 2015, I know everybody was hurt. They didn't make the playoffs. 2016, they didn't make the playoffs. 2017, they didn't make the playoffs. 2018, they weren't getting ready to make the playoffs. But then, well, you know the rest. So, we just want better. We just want better. We just want better quality. We just want the Ravens to really show that they are really trying to have the most success that they possibly can and making investments in somebody who is just unlike anybody that they have ever seen before and ever had before. You do not want to, even though it feels like you have, but you do not want to waste this opportunity. You, you have a crucial opportunity right here with Lamar Jackson. You do not want to mess this up and you do not want to waste it. So Ravens fans are just hoping that things are better and that we can really like truly really get to see all right how great can Lamar Jackson be especially with everything that he's been asked to do over the years everything that he continues to be asked to do how great can he truly be I don't want it to be a situation to where all right well ah, well we never we never got to see his full potential we never got to see it and we, we down here 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, uh, maybe even 20 years down the road, and we're thinking back to Lamar Jackson. Oh, man, I just wonder how that could have been if Ravens would have really went all in for Lamar Jackson back then. Oh, man, that, that would have been something right there because that dude was sure special. I don't want it to be one of those, oh, I wonder what could have been, but it's about what should be. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.